Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bouillon and to another episode on my flood damaged Porsche 968. We finished the last episode with me installing the balance shaft belt, getting the rotor on, um, all kinds of small bits to the engine. We had to stop at the point where I was going to start running the engine. Um, if you missed that episode, I'll put a link for you up above to catch up. But what has happened off camera is... As you can see over here, I've got cooling fluid in the car. Everything is good. I'm not seeing any leaks. It's been sitting in here for a couple of days and it's been finding its way through the engine because every day I have to fill it up a little bit. I'm just under minimum now, so I'll be filling this up again before I start. I have also added fluid to the power steering reservoir. As you can see, that's nice and full. Again, this hasn't been bled yet, so I've turned the steering a couple of times back and forth, but it needs to be bled. We'll do that. And I have filled the engine with oil. As you can see, there's a brand new drop of oil on the dipstick. And the last thing I had to do was to drain the fuel out of the fuel tank. And I can tell you that that has happened because if you look on my bench, You'll see I've reconditioned the tray. I've put new foam everywhere where it needs to be. And if we go to my other dirty workbench, you will see this is a brand new fuel pump. The old one is in the box over here. This was working, but I'm replacing it because I'm here now and I bought it. The filter that came out of the, out of the tank is very clean. I'm not having to replace that even though I have a spare on the shelf. But since I have three transaxles, these spares come in handy from time to time. Let me go underneath the car for you. As you can see in here, if we look inside the fuel tank, this is a very nice and clean tank, so I'm not too worried about that. So what I want to do now is to pull out that fuel filter and replace that, and then we can start building up the fuel system again, and then we can start the engine. So sit back, relax, and let's start working. <laughs> Um, it wasn't clogged it flowed on both sides which is a good sign but i think you would have seen in the film the fuel that came out of this was like a bright yellow which is not the color of fuel uh, in the netherlands or germany so that tells me the fuel is quite stale um, i'm replacing this filter which is not original porsche but this is an oem manufacturer with a nice original porsche filter and i know you guys are going to think why spend the extra five bucks I spend it because of that little sign there. I just love seeing it. I don't know why. It's maybe a bit of a tick that I have, but I love putting parts in where I see this little manufacturer stamp of Porsche. I know I'll never see it again, and it does exactly the same job as this one. But yeah, it makes me happy. So this is going into the car now, and then we'll start building up the rest of the fuel system. At first, we clean. <laughs> determine the position of these pipes I can tighten them where they need to be I've installed two new copper crush washers so this should be good now all right let's go assemble the tray and then we can get it back into the car So we have now completed this fuel tray sub-assembly, um, new pump, uh, the pipes were good, they, they are not replaced. I've got the power to the pump set up. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to take off this piece, this is a piece that can be removed. Um, I didn't take it off that way, but it would have probably been easier. I'm going to take this off, that gives me access to this pipe to hook it up to the, to the tank, and then we should be able to get this back into the car. So 
So now that everything is plumbed and plugged in down here, it's time for us to put some fuel in the tank. All right, so I'm filling the car with a fuel called Ecomax. This is fuel that you put into classic cars that stand for a very, very long time. It's very high grade fuel and it should help clean the injection system. Right, so that's 20 liters of the best fuel money can buy. And with that, we can now install the new fuel lines. Just need to figure out what goes where. I think I'll start with the biggest one first. And I think it goes like this. was way tougher than I gave it credit for. Um, they came off so easily, but getting them back was extremely time consuming because you have to line two things up and these lines are not really flexible. So um, that was quite an ordeal, but they're in. And so is my fuel rail cover. And this looks freaking awesome. Don't you guys think? Now, there's not a single thing in the way of me turning this engine over for the first time. So I'm gonna pull out the fuel relay first. I wanna make sure we build some oil pressure. So once I've got oil pressure, I'll put back the fuel pump relay, then I'll get the fuel pump to prime, then I'll have a look if we see any leaks anywhere. If I don't see any leaks, then I think we can try and start her. And hopefully she fires up and does not sound like a bag of nails and blows up, but um, I'm fairly confident. The following day, Right, so I've double checked everything. The MEF is installed. I've got the belt temporarily installed on the power steering pulley so we can bleed the system. Um, so there's nothing left for me to do now other than pull that relay and see where we get to. Now we try. So good, I'm not hearing too many scary sounds. I'm gonna plug back the relay and see if she'll prime. One minute, 37 seconds later. Yeah, so it's not starting, I think, at least, because I made a rookie mistake, and that's to put these in incorrectly. I thought I had it right, but uh, apparently my notes were wrong. And uh, then I went and got the sticker from my box and stuck it on here, and I realized I had them wrong. So um, I'm going to fix it now, and hopefully then she will fire up. So the problem is not solved yet, so I'm putting a light in between the spark plug and the ignition wire to see if I'm getting spark. Um, I know I'm not getting fuel because I, I opened up the cap for the fuel rod and it's bone dry still. So that's the fuel pumps not firing. Um, so I might be dealing with multiple issues here. Um, like you guys know, the car was completely uh, apart and I haven't started it since I put back the interior of the computer. So one of those computers might be badly connected. This could be anything at this point, um, which is going to make this hunt quite difficult. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch off the lights. I'm going to hook up the battery again and we're going to see if this guy lights up.
Okay, so you guys saw that this guy is sparking. Um, that means I have two out of the three elements that I need to for an engine to run is working. I've got air, I've got spark. It's just the fuel. I, I even tried to jump the uh, relay um, to get the fuel pump to run and it's not running. So I'm now starting to wonder if I have a faulty fuel pump. Um, I know I hooked it up, so it should run. But what I could do is I could go see underneath the car if I'm getting 12 volt. Maybe that's the next step. Alrighty, let's see if we can put 12 volt directly onto this guy. Okay, I've got my probe. Okay, so it's not the pump. Let's see if we can get it to pressurize the fuel rail. Thousands of tears later. I really don't know why I'm not getting fuel into the fuel rail. I've opened up the valve here. It's completely dry. Um, and I've checked under the car. At the fuel filter, there's fuel, so I know that's working. Uh, it is pumping the fuel, but somehow it's not entering the rail. Um, what I'm now doing, just to be double sure, is I've put a Noid light onto the first injector. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the engine over again. I should see a light from the spark plug and I should see a light from the injector. Um, if both of these light up, then I know the engine wants to run. It's just not getting fuel. Yeah, so let's see if that works. All right, here we go. We saw the spark plug on cylinder number one firing, and we also saw the injector for cylinder number one firing. Um, that really leads me to believe that the only issue I have is that I don't have any fuel inside this fuel rail. I've done a little bit of research, and I realized that my jumper that I always use on my 924s is not sufficient for a 968. For a 968, we need a three-prong jumper. So I quickly slapped this one together. This will now go into my drawer of special tools. And before I jump the relay, I'm just going to go onto the fuel rail again. I'm going to back off this nut. This should allow the fuel to run through without any pressure. And then hopefully once I have fuel in the rail, she will run. Let's see. When you take this out, be careful. There's a ball bearing inside it, so you do not want to lose it. You look in there you can see it's wiggling so on the reader you have to jump at three of them i'll show you a picture of it it's the easiest oh that's good did you guys see that did you see that that's fuel that is fuel i'm gonna do something a little unorthodox And that is to put my fuel pressure gauge that I normally use on my 924s on here. That'll allow me to bleed the air a little bit better. And I'll try and catch the fuel back into the can. Like that. Right, let's jump it again. There we go. There we go. Look at the pressure. This is what we want. I'm seeing three and a half bar, which is about 50 PSI. And that's good enough for me. Just gonna bleed off the pressure again. Again, now that I know it's inside the rail. Right, let's see if she will start. Oh, 
you can see oil pressure is great um, voltage is not the best uh, I think I need to replace that voltage regulator but uh, yeah she's good she is good a lot of stress but she's good she's good she's good she's good um yeah she needs to get warmed up um we need to get some heat into the into the engine pressures are good so that means the oil's going where it needs to go these uh, hydraulic lifters are still very noisy but they will calm down the skies and run in forever uh, but for now the most important thing was it sucked the fluid in it sucked the power steering fluid in uh, and she's running so the next thing for me to do is to take her outside, get her nicely warmed up. She has to cycle through some heats and maybe with a little bit of luck, I can take a sneaky test drive around the block. She's not licensed, so I can't go too far, maybe just up and down the road. And uh, then I'll get a better idea of how everything is with regards to wheel bearings, etc., etc., etc. But this is a massive milestone. I'm really happy. Thank you for watching, guys. And until next time, goodbye.